Thank you so much for being here. And today we're going to talk about QNX six file systems. And we're going to talk about them because these are used in vehicles, in cars, in trucks a lot. Okay. The QNX file system, it's um, came or it's owned and developed, maintained by BlackBerry for vehicles. So the idea for this video came with some conversations with some, you know, examiners, friends of mine, and most forensic tools do not have support for QNX six file systems. Okay. And um, a lot of folks, when that happens, they decide to just carve out whatever they can from that file, unknown file system. And that's fine. But if there's a way we could get access to the logical files within those partitions, right? Why wouldn't we, right? That way our analysis is more complete and not uh, so random. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to show you a way of doing that using Ubuntu, right? Uh, free open source tools so you can get access to the logical uh, files within these partitions, right? So let me show you here. It's uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, the first thing we need to do is um, take that extraction down from the vehicle using your forensic tools or a chip off, for example. You do a chip off of the car. You take that uh, DD ISO uh, file and we're going to add them to our Ubuntu uh, machine. This, this here is a, a virtual machine. I'm going to use sudo and call genome disks to be able um, to get that ISO, you know, with the partitions within it and make it accessible to my uh, Ubuntu system. Okay, so there's one for about Ford F-150 and I'm going to attach it to our system. So now I have access to the partitions within that ISO. You see partition 2 and partition 3, the ones that we're interested in. And notice they're called dev loop 14 p2 and that's the name that's given dev loop 14 p3 as always make sure that you work with a copy of your iso so your dumps um you know for forensic purposes okay we're going to ext extract those logical files so first i want to see print out what my working directory is so this is where we at okay and now i gotta create what's called a mount point so i'm going to create an empty directory in my system that will i will use uh as a point or pointer or repository of those partitions like and a way for my system to access those those partitions so i'm gonna create uh these mount points these that this empty directories and i decided to make them here in the media slash you know a big directory and i'm gonna call them for consistency uh the same way uh, the same device names that genu disks uh, lid that my box gave it so notice how it says loop 14 p2 which is consistent with loop 14p2 for my second partition. I use sudo to get um, the proper rights to, to execute the command. And if I go to that location, to the home, Abrignoni, I'm mean, sorry, media, Abrignoni directory, there it is. So it's created successfully, loop 14p2, excellent. And you can name it whatever you want, but I just like to make it consistent with what I'm seeing on this screen. The next one is gonna be loop 14p3, so I you know, re rename or name it accordingly, and there it goes. You can see on the screen on the bottom left that is the mount points. Those empty directories are created. Okay, now I'm gonna take my cheat sheet and use the command that I need to make those mount points. And I will put that command um, in the description of the video in case you need it, so you don't have to worry about pausing it and getting it. But a quick explanation: you see there's sudo again permissions that we need mount the type of file system I'm going to look at, which is QNX6, and QNX6, I say, okay, I want loop 14P2, that's my device, and where I want to put them, or where I'm going to point it or mount it to. So I use the directory I just created, and voila. See, it says it's mounted at the location. If I go there, I can see logical files in it, which is great, right? Now I can go and do my analysis, right? Let's do the next partition as well. In this case, it's 14P3, so I'm going to change the command there so it's consistent with the next step you use the right arrow to replay the last command and then you just edit that command it's easier than typing the whole thing and I hit enter and there you go and if I go to the next directory you will see that mount point that the data is there and that should be enough to do some analysis okay but personally I like to take that data and put them in a container that I could extract for further analysis okay in this case I'm gonna use 7-zip uh, uh, to do that, okay, create a zip container. So I'm gonna go now and go to the desktop, and you can make 
you can do the following anywhere you want, but I like the desktop, easy to find. And I'm gonna create a directory or a folder that will receive this logical container, right? The zip file that will contain all my logical files. And I like to do this because now I can take that zip file and put it in any tool, and I can look at that data independent of the original QNX6 file system, okay? So I'm gonna create a, a folder name or a directory name data extraction example, there it is, using the make directory command, easy. And now, here you see the command, the sudo apt-get install p7zip minus full. That's the command to install 7-zip. It doesn't come up with doesn't come up with Ubuntu. You can install it, and then the command to actually make that uh, that collection of data. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move into this folder. So I can save myself some writing on the command, and you can see it's empty. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there so you can see how it progresses. And now I'm going to go. Okay, sudo 7-zip. I want to do a collection called extraction.zip and the media abring noni folder. And why? Because inside that uh, di directory are my two mount points. And I'm making a zip of the contents of both mount points, all right? The loop 14p2 and loop 14p3, okay? Like in a good cooking show, we're going to use the magic of, of uh, you know, of time variability. I'm going to go quickly, and there you go. It's done. Extraction is complete. Everything is okay. And you'll see there that there's your zip file. And if you open it with the archive manager, you can go here. You see directory that you copied and the two mount points and the data within those mount points. And now you can take this the zip file and do any analysis with any tool. Zip is pretty compatible with everything. And you don't have to worry that the fact that these used to be in a QNX6 file system, that's now immaterial to your analysis, in, in at least for a logical file analysis, right? Um, if you're going to do in-depth analysis in regards to metadata and timestamps, that's a whole different story. <laughs> so, and that might be another video for another day. But for now, you do that. Now, I'm going to take those partitions away because I'm done. So, I hit the minus sign here per partition. So, I unmount them and then I unmount the, the, the ISO file. Okay, if I go there, you'll see there's nothing anymore in those mount points because I unmounted, took away those partitions. Okay, and for cleanup, I'm just going to delete. Uh, those uh, mount points, those directories, because I don't need them. I don't need them, any, need them anymore. So I'm just gonna go and remove them, right? Using the, uh, the following command. And of course, I gotta make sure that I uh, actually delete the right location. So I'm gonna fix this in a second here. You see there? So media, yep. Excellent. And I'm gonna delete the first one. Loop. And I called it 14p2. Hit enter, takes you know deletes that directory, and then p3, enter, deletes that directory, and you see the Abrignoni directory is empty. And that's pretty much it. So so recapping, we went from having a file system that we couldn't understand. We opened that, well, attached that ISO to our Ubuntu system, mounted those partitions using Ubuntu, used 7-zip to generate um, an extraction or a, or a copy of all, of all the logical files in a zip file, then now we can take and do whatever analysis we need to do. Um, I have been developing with other folks in the community a tool called VLEAP, Vehicle Locks, Events, and Properties Parser. And uh, I will do a video shortly um, showing how it works and it can ingest these logical extractions and get some meaning uh, out of it. So thank you so much for watching. Like always, any questions, comments, you can reach out here on YouTube or on Twitter or send me an email, and we're happy to help. Uh, again, thank you so much, and have a nice day.